Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com and this is the Ziyun Crane 2S Gimbal. I've been using this gimbal for a few months and have filmed a couple weddings with it, as well as taking it with me on a trip to Colorado to film an elopement. Today, I want to review this gimbal from the perspective of a wedding filmmaker. So if you happen to film weddings like me, it should be helpful to you. Also, for the sake of ethics, I want you to know that while Ziyun did send me this gimbal, they are not paying me to make this video, and the first time that they're going to be seeing this video is the same time that you see it whenever I upload it to YouTube. This video does have a sponsor though, my friends at Artlist, but more about them at the end of the video. With that out of the way, I feel like there's really two different types of filmmakers that are considering this gimbal. The first and possibly smaller group at this point are filmmakers that have never used an electronic gimbal and are considering picking one up. To those filmmakers, I say welcome. Gimbals are a lot of fun almost as much fun as drones, but that's another topic. And if the first group of filmmakers is people that have never used a gimbal, it makes sense that the second group is, of course, filmmakers that already own a gimbal and are considering upgrading to the Crane 2S. Maybe you already own a Crane 2 like me, you've had it for a few years, and you're wondering if the 2S is a worthy upgrade. Or maybe you're coming from something like the DJI Ronin S, and you're considering the RS2, but its $850 price is a bit steep. So whenever you see the Crane 2S is coming in at $600 or cheaper, you start thinking to yourself, maybe I should save some extra cash. Now, full disclosure right off the bat, I have not used the DJI RS2 yet, so I am not going to be able to do a full comparison between these two gimbals. That said though, it's impossible to ignore the RS2 and its capabilities, so I am going to talk about some differences between these gimbals, but this isn't a hardcore versus video comparing every single difference. Back to the Crane 2S review now. This gimbal is going to be very familiar to you if you are coming from a Crane 2, original Ronin S, or honestly most other camera gimbals. For the past few years, it's felt like Ziyun was really trying to reinvent the gimbal. New models like the Crane 3 Lab, Crane 3S, Weeble Lab, and Weeble S have been great experiments, but I guess you can call me a bit of a gimbal purist, because whenever I tried out those gimbals, I never fell in love with them. The Crane 3 Lab and 3S especially felt like they were sacrificing traditional vertical usability for enhanced versatility with a low angle underslung mode. Instead of a long handle on the bottom you could grip, the handle came out the back. And while that ostensibly made the gimbal better if you wanted to film low shots close to the ground, I don't film shots like that very often, and I personally felt like this was a move in the wrong direction from a usability standpoint. That said though, I know plenty of filmmakers that love the Crane 3. Personally though, it just didn't work for me. I did not plan on upgrading from the Crane 2 unless I was going to be moving to a gimbal that had a similar form factor. Thankfully, looking at the Crane 2S, this gimbal is very similar to the Crane 2, just bigger, beefier, and stronger, with some nice quality of life improvements over the Crane 2. To start, the arms are longer than before. Unlike my Crane 2, which I needed to buy an extension plate for so I could mount my A7S II with a battery grip, the Crane 2S has large enough arms out of the box Likewise, the motors are larger too, which probably means the 2S has a larger payload. Wait, Matt, why are you saying probably? Well, this is where things get a bit weird about the Crane 2S, because I cannot find a payload rating for this gimbal anywhere. In the past, it seems like every company that came out with a new gimbal was screaming in all their marketing material how much weight the motors could handle. The Crane 2 had a 7 pound max payload. The new Ronin RS2 can hold up to 10 pounds. The Crane 2S has a high load capacity? Where are the hard numbers? This used to be such a simple metric to determine a gimbal's strength, but Ziyun seems to have moved away from that. I can't find a payload rating anywhere on their website, marketing material, or in the manual. Now, in place of the max payload rating, Ziyun does give you a very detailed PDF saying what cameras and lenses can be balanced on the gimbal, but this absence of a maximum payload capacity does make it difficult to understand at a glance whether the motors are actually much, if at all, stronger than the Crane 2. It's weird, right? That said though, I do feel like we've reached 
peak motor strength for gimbals, or at least a motor strength level where nobody's gonna complain about it anymore. Ever since the Ronin-S and Crane 2 came out, it's very rare for me to see someone complaining that their motors aren't strong enough on their gimbal. For the Crane 2S, in my testing, I've found that it can easily hold my Sony a7S II or a7S III with a battery grip. I've also seen videos online of people mounting two cameras on top of the gimbal, which is crazy, but kind of cool. My point is, you shouldn't need to worry about the weight of your camera and lenses on this gimbal. Your footage should be stable and smooth. And to show that, I've made sure to film some shots in 24 frames per second with no slow motion while using the gimbal, to give you a good idea of how stable it is when filming. Looking down here to where your camera base plate mounts to the gimbal now, you'll see that Ziyun has reworked this entire arm. One of my favorite features of the Crane 2 was that it used Manfrotto quick release plates, the same plates that I use on all my cameras and tripods. This made taking the camera on and off the gimbal pretty fast. That said though, even with the quick release plate, it was a bit slow mounting the camera to the gimbal because the camera needed to be locked into the exact position where it would be properly balanced. This wasn't a huge amount of time, but when you're filming a wedding where something important can be happening and every second counts, being able to mount your camera on a gimbal quickly is very important. With that in mind, Ziyun kept the same mounting plate, but made a really nice improvement to it with this lever here. Slide it open and the entire base of the gimbal can slide off instantly pretty fast. But look at this. When I want to put my camera back on the gimbal, I can slide it back in, lock it, and the gimbal is now perfectly balanced and ready to use. No need to make any small balancing adjustments. I love that speed and it will save me a few seconds when filming. Keeping that speed in mind, the Crane 2S now has a button on the back that toggles through different shooting modes. I prefer to use the follow mode when filming, so I can now easily turn on the gimbal and press one button to be in follow mode. Another big improvement to the Crane 2S, which you've been seeing in action this entire video, is that the arms now lock. This makes the gimbal so much easier to transport. Just slide the locking switch, move the arms, and they lock into place. I love this feature. This is also a great benefit whenever you're balancing the gimbal because you can lock the arms and balance them individually, which greatly speeds up the balancing process. In addition, these feet are also larger and more sturdy than the Crane 2, and I'm less worried about this gimbal falling over and I don't have to retighten the legs often like I did with the Crane 2. Lastly, one of the most welcome improvements that I found is that the 2S now lets you change motor settings on the gimbal itself using its screen. I'm someone that prefers prefers to lower the panning speed of my gimbals to make them look more organic. And whereas with the Crane 2, I had to pair an iPhone app with a gimbal to change settings over Bluetooth, the 2S does away with all that and allows for easy setting changes on the gimbal, no phone or Bluetooth required. So as you can see, overall, there are some nice improvements that the Crane 2S has made over the Crane 2. And there are a lot of new features that I haven't even had the chance to use yet. Things like mounting your camera vertically, which, for me, being a wedding filmmaker, I don't see myself filming a vertical wedding video anytime soon. That is, unless it's some TikTok celebrity wedding, which, hey, that could be cool. There's also Ziyun's trans mount image transmission system, a mechanical follow focus, sling grip, lots of cool stuff. But for me as a wedding filmmaker, like I said, I'm a bit of a gimbal purist. I want a compact lightweight system that I can carry around all day that isn't going to have a ton of bulk. I don't even want to hook the camera up to the gimbal with cables to be able to start and stop recording because that's gonna make it take even longer to take the camera off and put it back on. In short, the rest of these accessories and add-ons don't really interest me for wedding filmmaking. And I don't know many wedding filmmakers that use a lot of accessories with their gimbals either. And I suppose this is the part of the review where we talk about where I feel that Ziyun missed the mark with the Crane 2S. See, while many of the upgrades that Ziyun made to this gimbal are welcome, they aren't exactly what I wanted from this gimbal before this gimbal was announced. If you came up to me and said, Matt, what are the two main changes that you want to see in the Crane 2 successor? That's easy. I would have told you I want a gimbal with a slightly smaller hand grip that's easier to hold, and I also want a gimbal that is lighter. 
Notice that both of these things are very helpful if you are carrying a gimbal around for 12 hours on a wedding day. Looking at the Crane 2S's grip, it's now carbon fiber instead of metal. But looking at the circumference, it's essentially the same as the grip that I used on the Crane 2. The circumference of this grip is at the upper limits that I feel comfortable holding with my average sized hands, especially after using the gimbal for hours. In contrast, having used the Ronin S, I prefer the slimmer rectangular shape of that gimbal's handle and I find it easier to hold for an extended period of time. Of course, I understand that the Crane 2S's grip had to be this size to hold the three batteries inside it that power the gimbal. And I do greatly appreciate that the gimbal uses replaceable batteries that can be swapped versus the Ronin where you have to buy a completely separate grip if you're worried about your batteries dying. But I can't help but wish that Ziyun had somehow found a way to shave a few millimeters off the circumference of the grip or put the batteries in a different orientation that allowed it to be thinner. My second major complaint about the Crane 2S is the weight of this gimbal. With my Crane 2, I always wish that it was just a little bit lighter. It'd be easier for me to carry around on a wedding day. Unfortunately, with the Crane 2S, Zine went the opposite direction, and for some reason added almost two pounds of weight to this gimbal. Yes, it clocks in at 4.63 pounds. That's 1.83 pounds heavier than my Crane 2, which weighed only 2.76 pounds. This thing is chonky, even with a new carbon fiber grip. I really wanted it to weigh less, not more. And whenever you compare the weight of the Crane 2S to the new DJI RS2, this is where things start to get ugly. Because the Crane 2S's 4.63 pounds is 1.77 pounds heavier than the weight of the RS2, which only weighs 2.86 pounds. For comparison, the original DJI Ronin S weighed 4.1 pounds, meaning DJI managed to trim 1.24 pounds off and nearly make it the same weight as my Crane 2. Okay, lots of numbers there, and I'm very sorry to my metric using friends. Moving on, let's talk about another annoyance that I have with this gimbal, this joystick. As I said, I prefer to use follow mode, so I rarely use the joystick. But my gripe isn't about the joystick's usability. My gripe is about how fragile it is and how easy it can fall off. This is the same joystick from the Crane 2, and maybe my joystick on this specific Crane 2S is worse than others, but the amount of Google results that come up for Crane 2 replacement joysticks doesn't exactly instill my confidence in that, because this joystick can fall off quite easily. Get a fingernail underneath it, and it pops right off. Ah! And what's gonna happen is that you're gonna be unloading your gimbal from your car, like I was, and you're gonna look down on the ground and say, what's that piece of plastic down there? Oh, that's my joystick. I almost drove off and left it. And then I would have no way to adjust the gimbal other than using follow mode. That sucks. Now, Matt, you may be thinking, why aren't you keeping your gimbal in its case so it's protected whenever you're transporting it? Well, that's the next issue that we need to talk about, the case. And I realize this is a bit more of a tangential thing because we're reviewing the gimbal, not its case, but Ziyun did so well with the case for the Crane 2 that it makes the Crane 2S's case look pitiful in comparison. The Crane 2's case is rigid, but has some flex, nice zipper, storage for accessories, and most importantly, I could fit my gimbal inside it fully balanced and ready to go. All I had to do was screw on the feet, slide my camera on, and start filming. In contrast, the case for the Crane 2S is hard foam. It has these cheap, plastic locks, and there's no way to keep the gimbal balanced when you pack it up. It feels like a huge regression to go from such a nice case with the Crane 2 to something so mediocre with the Crane 2S. Lastly, let's talk about the arms of this gimbal. And this isn't so much of a con, as it is an oddity. The Crane 2S uses a very traditional 90 degree roll motor arm on the back. This is just like the Crane 2, and unlike many of its competitors that have switched to a dropped 45 degree arm. In every single piece of marketing material that I've seen for the Crane 2S, Ziyun always shows it with this 90 degree roll arm. The website shows a 90 degree arm. In the instruction manual, there's a 90 degree arm. So imagine my surprise when I'm watching fellow YouTuber Dan Watson's video about the Crane 2S, and he has modified his to have a 45 degree arm. This is possible, I had no idea. And the more research that I did, the more it started to look like 
like this may be more of a sketchy modification than one that is fully endorsed by Ziyun. That said though, it does appear to work well. And as someone that really likes a dropped 45 degree arm, I'll probably do it on my Crane 2S soon enough. If you want to do it yourself, I'll link down in the description to my friend Josh Morgan's tutorial over on his Momentum Productions YouTube channel. It's not hard to do. Regardless, if this is a sanctioned modification by Ziyun, I would think that they should be shouting this from the rooftops because it's really cool. I don't know of any other gimbal that lets you change your roll arm angle from 90 to 45 degrees. I think it's a cool selling point. But alas, just like the lack of marketing material for the maximum payload for this gimbal, it's all just a bit weird. With that, it's time to wrap up this review. Let's talk price and the competition. The Crane 2S comes in at $600 for this gimbal, but I've seen it on sale for as low as $540 at the time of making this video. In contrast, the closest competitor to this gimbal, the DJI RS2, comes in at $850. So now we're at the point where you need to start asking yourself, is the $250 or more price premium of the DJI RS2 worth it? over the Crane 2S. Let's go back to what I said at the start of this video. I think there's two kinds of filmmakers that are considering the Crane 2S. You're either a filmmaker that is buying a gimbal for the first time, or you're upgrading your gimbal and are considering the 2S. If you're a filmmaker that is new to gimbals, the first thing that should dictate whether you're gonna buy this gimbal is the weight of your camera and lens. Do you typically shoot with mirrorless cameras and smaller lenses? In that case, I think the Crane 2S with its much higher payload capacity, size, and weight is overkill for most smaller camera and lens setups. And I think you would be better served with a more lightweight gimbal like the Ziyun Weeble S, Moza Air Cross 2, or if you can afford it, the DJI RS2. Now let's say that you are considering upgrading from the Crane 2 to the 2S. In that case, I think you really need to consider if the added benefits of the locking arms, the faster quick release plate that removes the gimbal arm, the ability to change your pan and tilt motor settings on the gimbal, and possibly a sketchy roll motor modification are worth it. Keep in mind that the 2S is going to add nearly two pounds of weight over the Crane 2 as well, and you will feel that weight at the end of a wedding day. Personally, while these upgrades are nice, I don't think they're worth spending $600, especially if your Crane 2 is still working well. This puts the Crane 2S in a bit of a weird position because thinking about it, the only way that I would really recommend this gimbal is if you have a heavier camera, so you need its capabilities, but you also don't have an extra $250 to buy the DJI RS2. But if you have a heavier camera, it's probably more expensive, meaning that you could probably afford the RS2. It just puts the Crane 2S in a weird position. So for me, as a wedding filmmaker that prioritizes having a lightweight camera and gimbal setup, I can't recommend the Crane 2S, either as a standalone purchase or as an upgrade from the Crane 2. It's not a bad gimbal by any means, but most wedding filmmakers don't need its capabilities, the competition is offering something that is lighter and easier to use, and I don't think Ziyun made upgrades in the right areas for wedding filmmakers. With that, thank you so much for watching this review of the Ziyun Crane 2S. As I said earlier, this video does have a sponsor, my friends at Artlist. Artlist is one of my favorite sites for licensing music for my YouTube videos, wedding films, basically any video. Any video, Matt? Yes any video. Because Artlist offers one of the broadest music licenses available for filmmakers, meaning you can use their songs for virtually anything. YouTube videos with monetization and no copyright claims? Check. Wedding films? Yup. Corporate and commercial videos? Even videos broadcast on TV around the world? It's all covered under one universal license. And this isn't cheesy, generic sounding music either. With songs like Made to Fall in Love with You by Michael Shines that give you that romantic vibe. I was made to fall Oceanside Love by John Coggins that punch you in the face with awesomeness. Look at 
like that beard, too. Sorry, getting distracted here. There is so much to love from Artlist's library of over 12,000 songs, and they're adding new songs every day. Okay, great, Matt. This sounds expensive, though, especially once you start saying words like commercial and broadcast music licensing. Well, here's the best part. To license and download an unlimited amount of songs from Artlist's library, you can get it for one flat rate of $16.60 per month. That's only $199 per year. Unlimited music with a universal license that you can use for anything for $1.99 a year. That's insane. Oh, and if you want unlimited sound effects too, that's an extra hundred bucks a year. I love it. And as a special bonus, if you click my link to Artlist down in the video description, you can get two extra months free. I highly recommend checking it out. Also, if you happen to film weddings like me, you probably want to book more couples and film more weddings. To help you out with that, I've created a free guide that's gonna walk you through some practical steps that you can take right now in your business to book more couples and film more weddings. It's a completely free gift to you. You can get it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.